I am 14 and my friend is 15. One night my friend asked me if I wanted to spend the night, so I did. His mom was at work and his dad was at the gym. Me and my friend were upstairs in his room playing video games. We kept hearing what sounded like scratching noises and slight banging. We thought nothing of it because he has a dog, so we kept playing our video game. Minutes later we heard the noises again, but they were louder, and so we went to go see if it was the dog. It couldn't be the dog because it was lying outside his parents' room. Fearing someone was trying to break in, we grabbed our knives and flashlights. We searched all the rooms upstairs, then went downstairs searching it with only our flashlights. We decided it would be best to search his backyard, although we don't know how someone would get in his backyard because it's fenced in and there's a deep drop off on the other side of the fence at the back. The search came up empty. I convinced my friend we should search the front of his house and make our way around his fence. We went around front and he went left and I went right. On the right his fence connects to his neighbors, so I went over to him to find him frozen with his light shined in the direction of the woods near the drop off. I was weirded out and shined my light in the direction of his to find a guy dressed from head to toe in all black frozen and staring at us. At this moment, I yelled run and we bolted inside the house and called 911. We waited and minutes later two officers arrived to find nothing and they told us to call them again if anything happens. Me and my friend were instructed by his parents to stay inside and downstairs in case anything happens, so we did. About an hour later, me and him were sitting downstairs on the couch, and he out of nowhere asked, Did you see that? See what? He then said, The light. Someone shined a light through the window over the fence. About a second after he said that, I saw a beam of light shine through the window. So we called 911 once again, and the officer showed up minutes later and yet again found nothing. Me and my friend at this point were paranoid and waited until his dad showed up and we took him outside to the backyard where we all heard footsteps. His dad convinced us that it was just a hunter, so we went to bed with no more problems. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. My friend asked me about two weeks later if I wanted to spend the night again, and I did. Later that night, his parents were both still at work. We were joking around about what had happened with what we thought was the hunter as his dog was outside doing its business. While we were talking, I peeked out the back door to check on his dog to find what looked to be someone peeking over the fence, so we immediately called his dog in and locked the door. We left it alone and minutes later, as we were in his room, we heard noises, so I looked out his window to once again see what looked like a guy peeking over the fence. So we grabbed knives and flashlights once again and went in the backyard and shined the flashlight in the direction we thought we saw the person. The light illuminated the outline of a head at the area of the fence we thought we saw the guy. We ran inside and called 911 and they responded. Minutes later they showed up and again found nothing and sat at the area outside the fence near the woods for 5 minutes in case something happened. Nothing happened so they left and they told us to call back if anything happened. We didn't tell his parents this time because we thought they wouldn't believe us. Me and my friend returned upstairs to his room and about two hours later we heard the loudest banging ever. It started from the downstairs on the left side and went to the front door. We freaked out, we grabbed a dog and barricaded ourselves in his parents room and got his dad's gun out in case we needed it. We then called 911 and again the police showed up and found no one and no sign of anyone and left. That was the last time we ever had that problem, and it still has us scared to this day. I was 14 years old, hanging out with my friend Jesse, who was also 14. We were in the living room playing Call of Duty. His parents weren't home for the night, so we were being as loud as we wanted. We were doing nothing but playing video games and eating junk food all night. And eventually, since his parents weren't home, he convinced me to just stay over for the night. So after Jesse went upstairs to go to the bathroom, I went downstairs to call my mom in private and tell her I would be staying over. By the time I got back upstairs, Jesse was back, and he just stared at me with a, a confused look on his face. I asked him what was wrong, and he said he thought that I was upstairs as he thought he heard someone in the bedroom next to the bathroom. 
I assured him I was downstairs making a phone call, and he just looked back upstairs with a concerned look. He walked upstairs, and I followed him. He stopped at the door to the bedroom and put his ear up against it. He then opened the door and peeked into the room. It was dark, but I could see there was enough light in there to be able to scan the room. We didn't see anything, so he shut the door. I told him he was being paranoid as we went back downstairs to play more video games. We turned the volume back up loud and resumed playing. After the match ended, the loading screen came up, along with the silence that usually accompanies loading screens. That's when me and Jesse both looked at each other. Jesse hit the mute button as we listened to what we were sure was somebody grunting from upstairs in that bedroom. But soon after the silence from the television, there was silence from upstairs as well. Jesse whispered to me that someone is hiding up there. They must have stopped making the noise as soon as there was silence down here. Jesse whispered to me that we need to leave through the back door right now as it was much quieter than the front door. I agreed and we headed outside to the back door. As soon as we were outside, Jesse got on the phone with the police as I looked up to the bedroom window. For some stupid reason, I turned on the flashlight on my phone and aimed it up to the window. About three seconds later, my heart dropped as someone stepped into view from behind the glass, but only for a brief moment. They seemed to crouch down under the window after spotting us. Jesse saw it too. That's when we actually took off down the block. We only came back when we saw a police car parked outside with its lights on. Jesse unlocked the front door for the two cops and they went inside to investigate. As me and Jesse were outside waiting by the car, we saw him. Him, as in the guy who was shortly at the window. He was coming out from the backyard, walking really fast, yet also clearly trying to keep quiet. This man was really tall, like six foot five or something, and he looked to be mid forties. Me and Jesse ran inside and screamed for the cops to come outside, but by that time he was gone, and we had no idea which direction he could have gone in. Inside of the bedroom that the man was in, a giant clothes bag had been pulled out from under the bed with certain articles of clothing obviously missing. There was also money missing from the desk drawer, and the desktop computer had been turned on. We never saw or heard of this man again. This took place in the summer of 2008 when I was 12 years old. I was sleeping over at my friend Calvin's house. I can't remember every little detail about what was going on, but I remember Calvin's family came home unexpectedly early and things were getting a bit hectic in the house. So we came up with this cute little idea of pitching a tent up in the backyard and sleeping out there for fun. We figured why not since it was warm out anyway. We pitched the tent in like 15 minutes with Calvin's backyard nightlight giving us enough light in the dark. Now on one side of Calvin's backyard beyond the fence was about 100 yards of nothing but trees. We lived in the country in New Jersey. Anyway, after goofing around for a while, Calvin turned off the nightlight and we finally went to sleep. Now I don't know about everyone else, but I cannot for the life of me fall asleep in sleeping bags or let alone anything but my bed. I was twisting and turning for like three hours trying to fall asleep in that thing. Sometime during the night, I started to hear a little rattly, creaky type sound coming from around the fence. It gave me chills at first, naturally. I wanted to wake Calvin up, but I didn't. It sounded like the wooden fence was being pushed or it was just moving. It was a bit windy out after all, but still, nevertheless, being the only one awake outside in a pretty rural area and hearing a weird sound would make anyone uneasy. I tried to ignore it for the longest time rolling around for like three hours hearing nothing but the sound of the wind to then hearing a constant strange sound was just too weird and I was getting downright freaked out. I felt the urge to pee coming on and I didn't really want to go out there without knowing Calvin was awake. So I woke him up and told him to listen to that noise. Of course he thought it was just the wind but as long as he was awake I did feel better about leaving the tent. I unzipped the tent and naturally looked in the direction of the noise. I couldn't really see anything, it was too dark, so I walked over and flicked down the nightlight switch. When I looked at the fence, I saw there was a person leaning on the fence with his head down, seemingly pushing the fence. I immediately turned the light off and practically dove into the tent. I whispered to Calvin what I saw, 
and as we both fell silent, we realized that the noise had stopped. I told Calvin to call his house phone as quietly as possible, but he said we should run straight for the back door. I agreed. He unzipped the tent as quietly as possible and opened the little door, and when he ran out of the tent, he screamed. In reaction, I jumped out from the tent and ran straight for the back door as well, not looking behind me. When I asked Calvin why he screamed like that, his response scared me. He told me he saw somebody standing right by the side of the tent in arm's reach. The rest of the night we slept in Calvin's room upstairs and I could swear, with the window open, I could still hear the creaky fence being pushed, but every time I looked, I couldn't see anyone out there.